afternoon. Good afternoon. Good uh, morning and good evening wherever you are for the audience. Uh, this is Mick Ozatello. I am uh, the CEO of Edgecom and Cellnex Telecom and Edgecom are very happy to host this exciting webinar today about boosting operational efficiency with private networks. Uh, as you know, the lack of reliable connectivity assets have been actually uh, slowing down the uh, digitalization of many of operational elements in, in different businesses. Uh, but with the emergence of the private networks now, actually, uh, you and we can enable a tremendous acceleration of digitalization and operational efficiency. I'm really excited to host this webinar today. Uh, we have amazing panel with four panelists uh, and also a uh, very experienced analyst from Analyst Mason, Michelle McKenzie. Before we get started, uh, let me also remind you that there is a chat possibility on the screen. So please post your questions through the chat. Uh, we'll be happy to cover them and answer them in the session. With that, uh, let's welcome uh, Michelle McKenzie from Analyst Mason. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Miko. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to, to participate in the webinar today. Um, so my name is uh, Michelle McKenzie. I'm a principal analyst with Analysis Mason, and um, I'm going to be sharing some of our research on private LTE and 5G networks to get the this uh, panel session kicked off today. So private LTE and 5G, why is this happening now? Well, certain demand side and supply side factors are coming together and awareness of private wireless and edge computing um, as potential solutions is increasing. I'm just going to cover a few of those factors on this slide, but of course there are many more. So cellular technologies are replacing some of the older technologies such as Tetra as contracts come to an end and cellular can provide a cost effective and, and efficient alternative. And this is partly because cellular technologies are standards driven, there's a future roadmap and they benefit from an ecosystem of suppliers. And this coincides with um, enterprises digital transformation strategies where demand is growing for quick, flexible and agile data collection and local processing. And of course, for this, they require robust connectivity. And enterprises in the industrial sector have unique challenges to deploying connectivity. Uh, they have a number of entrenched fixed technologies already in place, for example. So for many enterprises, retrofitting or overlaying new networks based on cellular is a cost effective option. Now let's take a look uh, in terms of the current market status. So in this chart, I'm sharing with you some of the uh, findings, some of the research from our private LTE and 5G network tracker. And I think at the last count, there were around 500 private networks announced. Um, here I'm just showing a sample of 101, and that's because these are in the public domain, so there's more detail about them. And as this chart shows, um, 25% of these networks have been deployed in manufacturing environments. Uh, some of the early adopters in manufacturing have been, of course, the car manufacturers such as BMW, Daimler and Ford, and they're deploying private networks in one or more of their factories. But manufacturing is very closely followed by the transport sector. And here there's been a great deal of activity in ports and airports, for example, who have been among some of the early adopters of private networks. Um, in terms of other sectors, mining, oil and gas, utilities, these are all important segments and they're looking at private LTE and 5G uh, to drive their digital transformation going forward. In terms of some of the use cases and some of the applications that are being uh, deployed, well, um, it will come as no surprise to the audience to see that many of these are IoT related. Early adopters are looking to support mobile applications such as automated guided vehicles, asset tracking. Um, and in terms of the use cases, they're very much looking at remote monitoring of some of these assets as well as surveillance. Um, I think it's, it's important to note as well that some um, 
possibly more sort of traditional communications as well, replacements for push to talk and so on, uh, are also being supported by some of these different sectors. And in terms of the actual network technology, as you can see on this chart, um, most of the networks that have been deployed today are actually LTE based. Uh, 5G is coming, uh, of course, but at the moment, LTE is proving to be a suitable technology to meet many of the enterprise requirements for in-building and campus networks. Now, key drivers for this are demand for mobility, for example. So I mentioned automated guided vehicles. Of course, there are other use cases as well. Um, and there's a nascent demand to connect mobile assets using more robust cellular networks compared to Wi-Fi, for example. Then private, net, uh, private LTE is not prohibitively expensive for large enterprises, and we've been hearing that through, through our, some of our enterprise surveys. And LTE is also able to meet uh, many of the SLAs around latency and bandwidth at present. So where are these networks being deployed? Well, most of the private LTE and 5G networks today are in high income countries. Um, Western Europe has the largest number with um, 37. Again, this is from our sample. And uh, this is followed by China with 23 and then uh, North America. And of course, I think, I think it's important to say that these countries also have some of the more advanced IoT markets in general. And of course, IoT is very closely related to private network demand. Now, just focusing on, on one of those um, particular um, sectors. So here we're looking at uh, ports. Um, to compete in the global economy, port authorities are embracing digital transformation uh, and they're looking at several different technologies to, to underpin that. Uh, the advent of 5G networks, along with you know, other technologies such as AI and so on, has prompted the world's top ports to explore new connectivity options to support their business processes uh, and enhance their competitive edge. And the key motivations for adopting private LTE and 5G include automating operations, which in turn will reduce costs and, of course, improving worker safety as well. And all of these factors create efficiencies. Um, ports are also looking to um, deploy connectivity, oh, sorry, um, to improve TEU throughput, uh, to, live up, to deliver on some of their SLAs, um, but also to meet their operational requirements. So I've outlined here um, a number of the key drivers. Um, I've provided a sort of flavour of, of the more current market status and the levels of activity. Um, and I've also talked a little bit about some of the main use cases that have been cited to and, and related to driving operational efficiency. And I'm now going to hand back to Miko to, to discuss with you in, in more detail around some of those themes. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Very, very interesting. Uh, Quick question to you before I, I, I let you let you go. Um, in terms of spectrum, uh, you see it available in pretty much all the continents. A uh, few words about the future of uh, spectrum needed for for this activity. It seems to be well available right now. Yeah, there's definitely more a spectrum more spectrum being made available. Of course, we've seen uh, industry spectrum being allocated in some markets, such as Germany. In other markets, such as the US, there's a you know shared spectrum has become available. So we're definitely seeing a lot more options going forward around spectrum. Very well, that's super promising. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Uh, that was very interesting. I think now we have a good opportunity to start introducing our, our prominent panelists in our panel. Uh, let me let me start by introducing everybody, and uh, and then we we'll let uh, each of the panelists uh, have a word of, of 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 themselves, and also what they are working on today in terms of uh, boosting operational efficiency and private networks. Hi, Mira. How are you? Fine, thanks, Miko. How are you? Doing great. Good to see you. 
any snow in Oulu? Yes, it is actually. <laughs> Very well. So Mira is the finance and port digitalization manager uh, at the port of Oulu up in the or pretty close to Polar Circle, right? Yes, pretty close, yes. <laughs> Very Definitely. Good. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me introduce uh, Pekka, Pekka next. Uh, Pekka, how is it going, Kalmar? Quite okay. <clears throat> Very well. Pekka is the director of uh, automation research at Kalmar, and, uh, and I would like to welcome you for this panel, panel as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then we have Jaakko Alapavola from Etteplan. Jaakko, how are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Fine. Very well. Uh, I guess you are now in the, the southern part of the country. Yeah, in the Helsinki area. All right. Good to have you with us. Thank you for joining. Uh, and then uh, uh, the last but not least, Andres uh, Köster from uh, Stura. So welcome to the panel. How are you doing? Thank you, Mirko. Quite fine as well. Okay, very well. So um, why don't we get started? Uh, I like to like to get this going by actually letting each of you to maybe provide a bit of a background and overview as to why why this topic is interesting and perhaps starting to introduce the some of the elements and improvements that you've seen uh, uh, by uh, by applying private networks type of technologies and, and boosting your business and operations. So. Why don't you, Mira, start first? Uh, I'll, I'll let you go and um, uh, just a short overview in terms of uh, what's going on at the Port of Oulu. Okay. So in Port of Oulu, we are building up this uh, digital infrastructure and, and cloud-based uh, port data platform and applications on top of that. And, and as a, a very important part of this, we have this private LT solution, which was uh, deployed for us uh, for about two years ago. We have this business model with, with a private LT, so uh, that we are selling the cap capacity of it uh, as a port authority for, for the company, companies and operators of the port area. And here shown at this video is uh, some use cases of our digital twin, uh, which is a platform for a very dynamic uh, port information. We can provide, for example, situational awareness data for the maritime operators as shown in this use case. We can uh, plan and simulate different different uh, type of port operations with this model. We can uh, see the pipelines like, like shown here and underneath the surface, ground surface, for example, uh, ice and snow, like, like it is winter time here in Oulu. We can uh, visualize uh, sensor data as shown here, draw heat map out of uh, crane sensor data we can uh, uh, plan and simulate uh, lightning solutions uh, as lightning is very, very, a very consuming uh, electricity solution for us. And we can also plan, uh, for example, camera angles and, and streaming views. And even if there was a camera, if you had the access, you could uh, press the icon and watch the view from, from that camera. And we have this uh, target of uh, building up this very real-time dynamic uh, visualization uh, of what's going on in port area with this uh, digital twin and to be able to share this data in different type of end devices for the end users. Thank you very much for sharing. I think it was a great introduction and very visual as well. Uh, all right, uh, why don't we move to the next panelist and introduce uh, Anders. Anders, uh, why don't you share your thoughts and sort of setting the scene from a Stura Enzo perspective, please? Yes, thank you. Well, maybe first of all, a little bit about the background. So, name is Andres Köster, and, and today's discussion panel I'm representing here, Stora and so a little bit about the company, then as part of the global bioeconomy, Stora Enzo is the leader um, 
leading provider on, on the renewable uh, solutions in packaging biomaterials, uh, wooden construction, and paper. We employ some 25,000 people in more than 30, 30 countries and then have the, our shares listed in Helsinki and Stockholm, um, stock exchanges. And on my pro own professional role, then as part of the Storanzo IT and then digitalization uh, organization, I'm in charge of the network department. Uh, our department is a very small group uh, consisting of seven persons whom we are then uh, responsible for the daily operations of our uh, global connectivity infrastructure. So most importantly, we operate our consolidated uh, corporate network, which then extends to near 300 units on more than uh, more than 25 countries, from large production facilities to headquarters to sale of sales offices. And then uh, on top of that one, obviously, our job is to ensure the security controls of the network uh, and the part and connectivity, remote access. And then in the context of today's subject uh, under focus, we operate also the wireless communication infrastructure inside of our offices and also to the production facilities. Uh, and yes, obviously, as we have such a vast amount of different different uh, units in, in other responsibility, our expectations and requirements also for the wireless uh, connectivity are, are quite different uh, from location to location. So in the context of, of uh, private networking, our current um, current um, pilots and work have been uh, going towards the smart operations, our production facilities, and, and um, looking in here then where really a value could be taken out of this technology and we could improve either a personal security uh, or otherwise uh, use digitalized tools over the wireless communication infrastructure. So that is the interest area we have. OK, thank you, Anders. I, I guess uh, you know you guys operate in such a vast uh, and global scale or large scale uh, must be must be one of the challenges how you how you deploy these kind of uh, technologies in uh, in multi multiple countries uh, I would imagine we can we can probably touch on that as well as part of our operational efficiency thanks for sharing that then uh, we have Jakko next uh, technology director at Eteplan uh, uh, Jakko would you mind also giving your perspectives to this uh, this introduction yes thank you Mito. Uh, happy to be here so um, I'm technology director responsible for uh, embedded and software solutions. So basically for, for the IoT, industrial IoT in Etteplan. Etteplan is a design house and a system integrator focusing on industrial applications, industrial IoT type of, of things. So ranging from, from the integrations from the physical world, from, from the sensors, all the way up to uh, cloud applications and, and business critical software integrations. And the connectivity is having very essential role there in, in the middle. And, and we have recognized uh, the private networks as a uh, essential uh, enabler in, in industrial IoT with the um, availability, reliability and, and security provided. And uh, we are cooperating with Edgecom in delivering and, and integrating these uh, private network solutions to, to various industrial companies ranging from uh, manufacturing to mining and logistics, etc. Et Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jakko. Uh, and then we have a uh, Pekka uh, as well from, uh, from Kalmar. Um, uh, research. Uh, Pekka, can I ask you please to also provide uh, your introduction to the topic and then we can get the panel started. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Very nice to be here. And uh, I'm coming from Cargotec Corporation. And uh, Cargotec Corporation, we have uh, three business units. Uh, and uh, one is uh, called MacRecord. They are making uh, equipment uh, for ships, uh, for container ships, and uh, for Roro ships and so on. And then we have Business area called HIAP, and they are making equipment uh, for trucks. And I'm coming from Kalmar business area, and we are making uh, cargo handling uh, equipment and solutions uh, for boats, as you can see in our video. And uh, we have been manufacturing those uh, those uh, 
machines quite many years already, but now, of course, we are concentrating more and more to solutions and uh, to provide the whole solution for our customers and uh, how to move containers efficiently and safely. And uh, we have started our automation journey with uh, this kind of high-end machines, what you can see in the video, like uh, rail-mounted cranes and uh, strato carriers, and uh, which are moving containers in the port terminal. And we also have these kind of smaller machines, like uh, forklift trucks and uh, and reed stackers, which can be utilized in in other industries also, like paper factories and metal factories, and uh, that is one field what they are doing. And we are at the moment we are automating also those. So 5G is really important uh, for these kind of machines. When we have mobile machine on rubber wheels, we can't have a optical fiber going to the machine and. Uh, we are utilizing 5G and 4G for that one, communication, sending tasks, and uh, of course, collecting information from the machine. Very interesting. Uh, thank you for sharing that, uh, that perspective, Pekka. Well, I think it's time to kick off our panel. Uh, looking forward to a very interesting discussion. And, and we have a, a set of uh, let's say, uh, experience uh, uh, people from uh, different, uh, I guess, verticals or coming from different perspectives. And perhaps in order to set, uh, set the scene, I'd be curious to know in, in a brief form, what do you, what do you, I mean, how do you guys define what does operational efficiency mean for you? Uh, would you Anders want to start perhaps? Well, thank you. I think it's a very good question. We've been placed in your operational efficiency. If I would need to think about that one, that is, that is uh, using everyone's time in the most uh, most efficient manner in that regards uh, as part of our our processes in here. And definitely, this is this is somewhere uh, where smart operations and digital tools now become to have a crucial role to play in here to make sure that every day where where we are <coughs> at our workstations. First of all, we are secure on our workstations, but we also uh, work efficiently with, with, with what we, what we are to do. And and uh, nowadays, uh, any sort of digital tools in that respect, obviously, do heavily rely on the connectivity aspect on 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 enabling to do so. So, I think that is the that is the answer to your question, Mikko. Yeah, broad, uh, it's a broad topic and uh, probably. Uh, different views on that. Uh, Pekka, you want to care to complement or challenge uh, Anders a bit? Yeah, of course, in, in our business, uh, data, of course, is, is a center, center of uh, efficiency. And uh, of course, uh, if you think about port, it's this kind of uh, multi-stakeholder environment, and you have a lot of stakeholders. and. Uh, in that one and how you are sharing information between those stakeholders that is really important and uh, to make the operation efficient and of course then comes the wireless communication so the really key key technology to make that happen and that, that is uh, the key key of automation also so automation kind of driving driving team uh, yes for you yeah, because uh, we need a lot of information and uh, coming from the machines and uh, how we can control the machine and how we are sending, of course, uh, task to the uh, manual machine also. It's, uh, it's not always automated. Of course, you can have manual machines and uh, you can use the same, same environments to control them. Very well. And interestingly, Mira, you come more from a uh, demand side. If you think what Kalmar, for example, is uh, is is doing, and and you know you see you see this, and data, of course, is something you are also very interested. in. How do you define the operational efficiency? Well, uh, as Pe Pekka mentioned, uh, ports are very indeed multifunctional uh, areas, and and so so are we here in Portofolo. So, all the uh, Steve Doring companies and their sub contractors and and all the maritime operations and and maintenance and and so it's we think as a port authority that it's our goal and and main task to uh, share the inf collect and share the information so that all these operation operations could uh, function together as as well as possible 
It's a, a lot about cooperation and collaboration and leveling that with uh, with connectivity. Yes. Yes, def definitely. So, so we just want to improve the situational awareness and and predictivity for all the uh, stakeholders, so that they can they can uh, you know optimize their doing, and that's when the port itself is optimizing it the overall performance. Very well. Uh, yeah, I mean, you see in multiple verticals and multiple industries, Ettepan serves a variety of, uh, of uh, complex industries. Uh, and you're very good at that, I know that for a fact. Uh, how do you define operational efficiency, maybe from your point or from your client's uh, customer's point of view? Well, um, from, from our point of view, I'm really excited about the, all the new possibilities enabled, which were the new application is very difficult to implement with, uh, or even impossible to implement with uh, other wireless technologies. So ranging from automation, as, as mentioned, autonomous vehicles, robotics and drones. And, and certainly that's an area where we are seeing a major uh, improvement in, in efficiency in, in multiple uh, different industries like manufacturing, mining, etc., cetera, and, and logistics, of course. Very well. Uh, maybe I, I can pick you on that one a bit. Uh, uh, you see probably uh, some critical use cases as well uh, for the customers. Uh, would you would you be able to talk or would you mind talking about a bit more in terms of what, what seem to be high on the list on the customer size if you uh, average out the current demand? Mm, uh, people safety, uh, especially in case of uh, autonomous vehicles. That's very important and, and all the... Uh, safety communication, like in, in mining environments or in, in, a, in a factory, that's really, really critical. It's uh, performance critical. It, it need, needs to be reliable, and, and that's where the, the private networks are really uh, providing value. Very good. Uh, Pekka, I know that you have been working um, quite a bit on the autonomous and tele-remote operations. Uh, would, have you found any economic benefits, efficiency uh, parameters, uh, you know, that you could maybe maybe give us some insight into? Yeah, of course, um, in past, we utilized quite a lot of Wi-Fi technology and uh, to implement these kind of wireless connections. And uh, we faced some, some, or uh, I can say that a lot of problems with that one. And uh, of course, now, of course, technology, you know, mobile technology, that is not a simple, it's quite complex system, but it's it's really reliable, and uh, and we have seen that uh, it is more and more reliable all the time, and uh, of course, the features uh, already in the 4G technology, LTE technology, they are providing us uh, really good benefits, and uh, how we can really communicate with our machines, and how we can send more and more information for our customers. Very well, and you, you see clearly um, uh, economic value that can be extracted from uh, from implementing such um, technologies. Yeah, there are really, really many possibilities. And of course, we started, uh, as you mentioned, uh, with the teleoperation or remote control. And uh, because that is providing a lot of uh, video video streams uh, to the network, and of course, you, then you need uh, a lot of bandwidth. and. Uh, with the Wi-Fi, it was not even possible in in many cases, and uh, and that is one on one example how you can get really good benefits and, and economical benefits of that technology. Great. Uh, I I know that Mira, you've been uh, you've been working. Uh, I mean, you have a very large area that you need to cover uh, as a port, and you've been working on on creating a digital pin out of the, the port, partly boosting uh, sort of uh, you know the the the, the efficiencies are out of that that can be extracted and then kind of uh, for Andres to get prepared. I know that you guys are uh, especially focused on indoor parts. So why don't we, I mean, if Mira, if you can sort of elaborate a bit on, on this digital twin. I mean, how does it, what does it mean for you and why are you doing that? Yes, we think that uh, d digital twin is a very mm, human friendly way of uh, visualizing things. For example, for our end customers uh, if we are for example planning some some cargo uh, operations we can plan and simulate the operations on our area and 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 then we obviously can plan all the pipelines and container fields and key areas and that sort of 
uh, things on our infrastructure with this model. And then we can also simulate, uh, as shown in the video, for example, lightning, uh, lightning um, solutions. But more and more, we want to be very uh, visualizing very dynamic data uh, in order to be able to improve the for example, efficiency, security matters and that sort of things. And obviously for a end user who is not familiar with our area, it's very, as mentioned, friendly, friendly way of visualizing things. So yes, we see many possibilities for digital twin. Great. Uh, maybe then Andres on the piggybacking on what I what I was thinking earlier, you know, on this indoor indoor part. Um, I guess your environment is more indoor centric. I mean, I know we have waste areas also outdoor. Uh, would you maybe maybe uh, elaborate a bit on, on this indoor aspect? Like what are some challenges there and how you look at it from, I guess, connectivity point of view? And then what are some mm -hmm. of the uh, efficiency levers that, that are relevant and important for you? Yeah, for sure. Well, well, indeed, but I would make a remark in here that in such kind of an operations as store I is doing, uh, indeed, the requirements actually do, do extend in all different categories in here. Uh, like with the indoor areas, our manufacturing plants, um, uh, large scale buildings, uh, very difficult environment to be to be uh, worked with. Uh, we also have vast outdoor areas for, for wood stocks, things as such. We, we have actually used uh, uh, our first private network pilots in, in order to gain uh, and provide a um, wide, wide uh, uh, aerial coverage, coverage for the for the wireless signal on one of the examples. But indeed, from the indoors perspective, uh, um, the potentials are there. Uh, we do have currently the normal wireless network being utilized in in in, in most of the extents uh, extent on such cases where we need to provide and wireless uh, wireless access near the machinery. But lately, we have been also evaluating and learning about uh, then the potential on doing doing this in a more efficient way and in a larger scale with the, with the LT network and private networks uh, as this allows us to cover uh, cover the areas indoor areas with the wireless uh, coverage using far less of the infrastructure that it would be required when utilizing just a normal wireless wireless and set up for that purpose and and indeed we have learned that we can uh, we can uh, truly take use of these enhanced broadband capabilities for the for the real time video communications, remote monitoring and surveillance, and also nowadays for the augmented reality and maintenance. And uh, um, and also the rooming is not at low, not at all less important. Uh, moving in between of different areas indoors, ensuring that uh, there is a continuous signal and connectivity, that is something that we are seeking for. Pretty, pretty good challenges there. I mean, the mobility aspect between indoor, outdoor, and the large area and, and container area. Uh, any thoughts or comments from uh, from from the comments from panelists? I mean, within the panelists, uh, any reaction uh, from you know, uh, Jaco, Amira, others, uh, for the others? Yeah, and for us, uh, there are quite many and uh, interesting uh, possibilities in your future. And uh, of course, what we are doing in the research, of course, uh, we are we are making really uh, big testing with AR and VR VR solutions and uh, how we can utilize them efficiently. Then we are even training uh, our guys, and when we are doing maintenance and. Uh, then you are operating operating the machine, and uh, in all applications we can we can utilize those technologies already quite efficiently, and that's really interesting. Very well. Well, uh, then maybe it would be would be useful to move uh, to a point that actually Jaco you mentioned that was uh, labor safety, employee employee safety. Uh, that uh, amazes me. Well, amazes me. Makes me very, very happy when you know every time when I visit one of these these sites that are are uh, industrial, the safety comes nowadays almost first in every place. I and mean, the safety training is usually requested before you enter on a site of, of any nature, and that's great. Um, any any links to the safety and the network uh, uh, availability networks in general? Can can those two things be linked? Up? Is there a correlation uh, between the safety and Let's say connectivity, I guess, in a, in a wide sense. 
Yeah, certainly. So this is very, in, uh, especially in, in environments like mining, it's very easy to, to understand that, that the availability of the network, network coverage is essential to have a uh, like, like situation of awareness of any kind. So there is a very, very strong connection in, in that. And as, as, as and uh, with the autonomous vehicles, that's that's even even more critical. So so definitely we can say that uh, the private network is a essential enabler for that kind of, of uh, applications. Jenny, of Sorry, Mikko, if you can go again, I think oh, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> Wait, yes, I, I think we didn't hear you. Okay, okay, understood. Now, I was wondering if you, any of you had other thoughts on this safety versus, uh, you know, what the connectivity provides, perhaps to increase the safety and improve the safety aspects, maybe pragmatic examples that you might have encountered? Yeah, we have quite many examples in, in our machines, and, uh, and when we started our automation journey, journey quite many years ago, and we utilized uh, Wi-Fi to send uh, comments uh, to the machine and uh, then, of course, to collect uh, the status information and how we monitor the machines. But uh, when we utilized uh, safety safety, and uh, how we connected that one, it was a totally separate channel and uh, we utilized actually radio modems that time. But now we are combining uh, safety signals and uh, the normal automation communication in the same channel and that is a really cost efficient way and uh, really helping us uh, to make our implementations. Yes, and I would like to add on, on top of this uh, efficiency and uh, reliability, visibility topics on, on logistic flows, which is obviously our target with with our private LTE solution and, and the safety and security uh, uh, topics. So the third one is uh, how, how can we preserve environmental uh, uh, topics and, and sustainability? I, I think that's one of the future topics that will be very important for us, for example, as a port to be able to provide information about the logistic uh, chains and which concern our area obviously but they are more and more important for the cargo owners because they are so important for their end customers so we th we think that we are we are a, a logistic hub that can uh, provide this information for for these uh, supply chains and this is something that i see very important and these network solutions are very crucial part of this the uh, collect, collection of data. I agree, and actually, it's maybe a good moment to take one of the questions from the the audience that, uh, to some extent, could relate to safety, more more maybe national safety in this context. But uh, the question we have is is how do you think 4G and 5G technology can help uh, with operational efficiency in the area of border control? Uh, I know that all of you are fairly uh, well, very. Uh, strict in terms of access to the, to the sites of you. Um, I mean, uh, under I know that you know, for example, the sites that you have, you control them, them well. Uh, maybe, maybe if you guys can give any tips for 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 this question, uh, owner in the audience, you know, how how could 4G, 5G networks, uh, private networks, actually help the, the border control situations? Access control, I guess, one option. Very interesting question, obviously being raised. Well, I can I can draw one example in here, which which we have been now uh, establishing one of the one of the first private network setups, and that has been for the region of autonomous uh, autonomous uh, drone um, uh, to be to be uh, used for the personal safety reasons in there in case of an emergency. Uh, there would be then a drone that is capable of covering the whole production area. Uh, and provide an assistance for the for the corresponding rescue teams. Well, if thinking about the same same uh, solutions being possible to be used elsewhere as well, that is something you could uh, you could think of in a border security 
context uh, maybe potentially possible on, on kind of an aerial monitoring and, and those things via then private networks. Uh, but I think there are many, many examples that can be brought. That's a great answer. Any other thoughts or suggestions? Well, I, I could, uh, I can agree with uh, port area security that, that drones are obviously a very useful technology for us, but any kind of uh, cameras, uh, sensors that are bringing in the information about the area, uh, what's going on and, and, and who are on the area, so real-time data. So, so basically uh, as in port area everything is moving so 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 wireless technologies are it's it's all, all that we need basically the fiber is not so useful for us in terms of security yes exactly so in in case of drones the the latency is is very essential uh, parameter and uh, and in case of uh, video surveillance the, the bandwidth is is very essential and the private network is actually combining both of those the, the, the very low latency and the high bandwidth making it very suitable for surveillance purposes even with the drone based surveillance and yes and you can uh, you, you don't need to wor worry so much about the coverage as in, in Port of All, we are constantly uh, expanding our area to the sea. We are taking land out of the sea. So, so the, it's very scalable solution and we don't need to worry about uh, taking fiber to these container fields anymore. So we, we think it's very, very important and, and, and good thing for us. Very well. Uh, Pekka, you touched uh, a little bit on uh, on different technologies of connectivity. You know, uh, it has been evolving over time, and now we are more or less on this 4G, 5G world in terms of uh, uh, you know generally available uh, standard space, etc. Uh, what what kind of uh, and this could be also for all. What what kind of consideration? What kind of thinking you have when you decide or when you choose between different connectivity technologies, whether it's fiber or Wi-Fi or LT or some proprietary more more, um, uh, let's say, legacy type of technologies. What, what are some of the key considerations and, and how do you choose a, a, a solution? Yeah, of course, there are quite many, quite many requirements uh, related to our machine communication, for example. And uh, of course, I already mentioned uh, with the video streams, uh, for example, that uh, then you need a lot of bandwidth. And of course, uh, the communication must be reliable because we are collecting information and sending information through that one. and. Uh, of course, latency is already mentioned uh, quite many times when you are controlling the machine remotely, then it's uh, really important that your latency is not exceeding your requirements. And of course, the cheater is uh, in, in the set limits. And uh, so the requirements uh, for the communication, wireless communication, they are really strict and uh, quite, uh, quite uh, tough and uh, that's why we have selected this kind of technologies like mobile technology is, is providing already and making making our pos solutions possible. Okay. Other, I actually like to hear from everybody on this topic. It's uh, uh, it's, it's very relevant, I would say, in decision making, you know, you need to mm -hmm. figure out the right tech to be able to provide the right solution for, for need. Absolutely. Well, it's it's pretty hard question, isn't it? I, I actually uh, remember from this morning uh, having a dialogue with our Asia colleagues in here about their their um, uh, expanding needs to to equip now a production area with a wireless signal and 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 indeed there are many different factors you need to take into account. I mean, first of all, what is the reliability you need uh, uh, from this setup? What what is going to be then the end use in there for these devices? Ease of the implement implementation, basically, uh, cost is always a very important factor, which needs to be considered. It it does need to be fit for the purpose, obviously, uh, at this given moment, when you think about those things. But more and more, we also uh, uh, more and more we also look towards that uh, direction. That that what we are now setting up is this fit for the fit for the purpose for the future being. I mean, what what we would like now. And what is our expectation from this system after three years, five years, and maybe up to 10 years? 
So uh, not to get to a situation that uh, that uh, if we invest money at this, this given moment, indeed, we achieve our, our short term target, but uh, eventually need to still retire uh, the whole setup as as it's unfit for the for the future requirements to be still emerging there in the background. So I think that's currently very wise whenever to, to invest now to the wireless equipment solutions to think not this this today's situation and not even this year's situation, but a couple of years in advance. What do you think, Jakob? Yes, ex exactly. And one thing that I would like to highlight here is the governance of the networks. So if we are considering an uh, operational environment like a seaport, like, like Mira told us, there are um, many stakeholders, different companies, operators, and etc. And uh, if you intend to share connectivity with those uh, different different uh, players and and even to build some some uh, like, like monetize the connectivity build some 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 billing system that's something very difficult to do with 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 a Wi-Fi as example because it's it's not originally designed for such a, a purpose or a use cases in mind but but in in terms of uh, in terms of, of private networks which is based on cellular technology there is this access control and 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 measure measurement functionality etc built in by nature so so if we consider think about the, the administrator of the network in in case of wi wifi you, you you need to do all the ad integrations and and think about what kind of certificates can be put into the end devices different operating systems etc etc very difficult very difficult but in in case of private network the administrator only needs to allocate a certain bunch of of sim cards to 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 the specific operators define what resources they have access to and do not need to care about you know what kind of end devices they are having, what operating systems they are running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is really making the, the private networks scalable from the governance point of view. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, Mira, you've been um, you've been going through that assessment as well when you made your choice. Uh, uh, partially, any 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 thoughts beyond what was discussed already? Well, actually, I, I totally agree with Jaco and. And in, in our case, uh, we have decided to utilize this private LT with, with the most critical uh, port operations. So Steve Doring, uh, Fleet and, and so on. So, so basically at the same time, we are leaving these public mobile networks for the visitors, which helps us them as well and 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 then we see that there are certain use cases definitely for for example iot uh, net, networks and and 5g so so we see that uh, as a micro operator of this area as as we call ourselves uh, because we like to think that we you know optimize the network utilization locally on our area so i think they they are all complementing uh, each other and 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 as they this wireless and these uh, re, they are resource that we need to u utilize in a very careful way so that's what we are trying to do very good very well very well uh we actually have a next question from the the audience and uh, i mean probably need to push you guys a little bit on this one to get uh, some data i know the, the it depends it's not the right answer now for this question and the question is uh, how do you quantify operational efficiency and assess the return on investment in the private networks in this case or networks in general i mean you know, and then maybe maybe if you can give some examples uh, of of the magnitude and what are you looking when you make these investment decisions? Uh, how do you quantify that? Yet again, a very good question and a hard one to answer. You need to look at the different different aspects. I can just yet again bring an ex example in here. We have done quite uh, quite. Uh, deep um, investigations in regards of then the private networking versus the existing wireless technologies in here and then when when we think about a couple of couple of uh, these pilot projects uh, we have come to a conclusion that it would have been 
approximately five uh, up to ten times more expensive to expand our existing wireless network even if the te from the technology point of view we could have achieved relatively same outcome then still uh, the, uh, the calculation based um, result was showing that the private network is just that much cheaper because of the fact that there is less of an equipment needed to, to cover the same area with the signal. So, so this is a most kind of elemental comparison you, you can make how to now put a fair uh, assessment in based of the features you are gaining and then the the uh, increased reliability and performance of the network, that's already another matter. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Um, any other thoughts? Yeah, of course, you have to consider that uh, what is the commissioning time and how much effort you need uh, to commission the system and was when you are operating and how to how you can monitor that system and uh, how you can maintain that one and uh, how good tools you can have. And um, these are also important and of course uh, quite many companies have uh, recently developed that kind of environments and uh, it is making our life a lot easier already. That you can really see that what is uh, how your network is performing and uh, what kind of uh, service quality it is giving for you and uh, if you have any problems you can you can really find them. Yeah, yeah, you've been. Uh, I think you've been having this discussion with a number of clients. Any, any insights from, uh, let's say, uh, supply side? Uh, well, I think it's better if if those companies utilizing the networks are are answering the question as, yeah. as we are primarily just uh, integrating. <laughs> but but indeed, we we see and we we believe, and there are significant uh, benefits. Otherwise, uh, so many enterprises would not be investing in in the networks. Yeah, yeah, proof is in the pudding. Uh, you agree, Mira? Definitely, yes, yes. Uh, for us, the private LTEs, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the first, uh, it's an enabler for for us to so that we can provide these new digital services. But on on the other hand, it's very important service that we can. Um, Sell, sell for for the port operation. So, so basically, we do need it our, for ourselves as port authority. It's very important part of this uh, digital infrastructure, as we call it. Uh, but at the same time, it's very important for our operators and companies on the area as well. Very interesting. Well, let's uh, shift gears and uh, uh, talk uh, a little bit about 5G. This is a short one if there's a question. 4G or 5G and why? Who wants to go first? Maybe I can, I can start. And of course, uh, we have utilized already 4G quite many years. And of course, um, the limitation what we are facing at the moment is, is the, the bandwidth, uh, what is um, going to upwards uh, direction and to uplink direction and um, because we are we are sending a lot of information and like video streams uh, to our our servers and uh, to that direction and uh, then the limitation has been uh, the bandwidth and of course uh, 5G is uh, is uh, making that kind of uh, solutions possible that you, you have enough uh, bandwidth uh, to that uplink direction also and uh, that is one reason why we are utilizing 5G technology and uh, now actually we have uh, our first uh, standalone 5G solution in, in our test yard and we are testing that one already. Very well. Anders. Well, I think you can be rather systematic on this decision that whether you utilize the existing 4G technology or, or the 5G technology in here, and it really depends now what is what is the use case, what you're needing to serve with that, that network. Uh, in our examples, when we have been seeking for the for the enhanced broadband capabilities, obviously 5G's feature set is, is far better to be delivering those ones. Uh, in, for, for, for the reason being for the 360 degrees high quality video, uh, or, or this kind of an augmented reality, you need to have a very high data throughput and in here 5G is, is indeed the way to go. Same goes for the low latency communications for the machinery. Uh, in other other aspects, I think uh, still the 4G technology will serve us for, a, for a quite a long time until the 5G is 
mature and, and, and will inevitably replace the 4G networks. But as I said, it really depends what is this use case at the moment and, and uh, which you would uh, like to choose. But I wouldn't make a very large distinction in between of them because private networking is private networking. The radio technology you're using in there inevitably doesn't change too much. It gives you in the future just better opportunities. Okay, uh, Jaco, you, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I fully agree with, with, with Andres that um, the, 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 the primary thing is, is the concept of private network. That's already with the 4G radio technology bringing clear benefits in, in reliability, availability, and, and um, you know, details like low latency, etc., etc. And, and, and I don't want to consider this like 4G versus 5G because the core network itself is already in, in most cam uh, cases fully compliant with the 5G radios. So there is a roadmap to that that you may uh, invest in, in 4G in the first phase if needed and then later on upgrade into 5G. That's fully possible. And we believe there will be both 4G and 5G and networks deployed in, in, in parallel in, in over the coming years, as, uh, as, as 4G may have certain benefits in, in terms of coverage, depending on, on, on the frequency bands used and, and so on. Yes, we see that as well, very much use case driven. Uh, Mira, I think, you, I think you're trialing 5G as well uh, in Olo not right yes. now. Yes, at the moment we are try definitely trialing on on public 5G and and we we see that it's yes it's complementing this uh, the these prior network solutions uh, as as logistics such a traditional and on and conservative business that I would like us to uh, seek benefits from uh, any network and wireless any technologies which which are which are given so so i i don't want to you know either to uh, you know they are not excluding each other we are benefiting out of 2g at the moment and 3g so so i i think that these all, all these technologies uh, can be very beneficial for for us in in port business and and that's what we are heading fantastic uh, uh looks like our time is is getting to the end of, of what's been allocated so uh let me uh let me conclude by uh, providing a few uh, maybe uh, chair remarks here uh, first of all, thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, you've been very uh, transparent and open and also contributing a lot to the discussion. It's been a pleasure, pleasure to host this. Uh, and, and like we've always thought it at Edgecom, you know, this is a kind of a eco ecosystem play at the end of the day, whether it's a you know, mining equipment provider like Sandvik and a mine or port equipment provider like Kalmar Architect and, and a port, et cetera, and, or, or, or forest. Um, or as the pulp paper industry company and uh, um, equipment manufacturer, for example. Uh, we think that ecosystems are important. And then at Edgecom, we are now uh, seeing also tremendous growth outside the Nordics, where we be mostly present now as part of Cellnex. Uh, we have an opportunity uh, to uh, basically uh, basically help our customers to boost the, the, the efficiencies uh, in operations in 11 countries right now. Uh, we're looking forward to that, and, and like you have actually indicated uh, uh, throughout the whole panel, it's really use case driven. Uh, the economics of uh, of um, of using different network te technologies can be quantified, and uh, and of course, from Edgecom point of view, Edgecom point of view, we are we are here to help in in getting to those results. So. With that, uh, I need to bring the panel to the end and the discussion. I want to thank you all for participating. Uh, thank you, thank you, audience as well for joining this. Uh, you are welcome to um, welcome to see this uh, this panel discussion at the uh, the uh, Cellnex Connectivity Days web web, web, uh, web page where you have actually registered. So thank you very much. Thank you for the panel uh, and for the audience. Uh, and have a great evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.